Okay, so today we're going to be looking at this Patriot Scorch. It's the 256GB version. It's an M.2 card which runs on PCIe NVMe. It's also the 22080 size and obviously it's a SSD. Uh, as you can see the packaging, it's plain and simple. It's a cardboard box, a little bit of plastic in which holds it in. Gives you a bit of information on there as well. Um, basics is with this the speeds um, depending on what program you test it on according to the manufacturer runs between uh, 1500 megabytes per second and 1700 megabytes per second for read and the write is between 770 and 780 megabytes per second so we'll uh, uh, check that out in a few minutes the max 4kb uh, random read write works out at uh, 200 for read and the write is 90k. The product comes with a three year warranty and it has also got a 2 million year lifespan according to the manufacturer. Okay so let's have a look inside the packaging, let's see if we can actually get it out of this plastic. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you've got the information on the front, so it tells you the size, barcodes, model numbers and all the gumph like that. And when we turn it over, you'll see on the back there is not much information there at all. It's basically just a PCB board with just a very small bit of information right in the centre. So let's have a look at this and see how it actually performs in reality. But before we do testing, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Okay, first of all, let's run through the test system setup. We used our standard uh, machine we usually use for all our testing for things like this. Um, it's basically a Thermaltake Level 20 MT case with a Gigabyte B360 Aorus motherboard. It's also got a Gigabyte Aorus 1060 6 gigabyte graphics card, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz Viper memory. All SSDs were tested as slave drives. Our main drive was a Western Digital Black M.2 SSD. All SSDs tested have been run as slave, so basically they did not have Windows installed on them or anything like that, they just had a basic format. All SSDs also were tested in an M.2 to PCI Express adapter provided by ICASA. That way we got an even test result across the board no matter if there's been any updates for Windows and motherboards and so forth. No heat sinks we used on the M.2 drives but I would advise it on some, especially uh, the ones that get hot which are generally the faster ones like the top end Samsung 970s and so forth. And while testing, all case fans were disabled, so the fans would not blow over the SSD and affect the temperature results. Okay, so first of all, we're going to test the read speed on Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, according to the manufacturer, it will get 1,500 megabytes per second. As you can see on our results, we got slightly better. We got 1,667 megabytes per second, so that's actually pretty good. Um, it's not the fastest one we've done, but again, it's uh, better than um, they're actually stated. Uh, let's have a look at the write speed. According to the manufacturer, it should be 770. Uh, and on here we got a lot higher than that, we got 959 which made it actually uh, pretty fast. Now don't get me wrong, you can get faster ones on the market but you generally will pay for it. For its actual price point it's actually performing very well. So let's have a look at Atto to see what that does. Um, according to the manufacturer it should get up to 1700 megabytes per second, so 1700. And we just got a fraction below that, we got 1,650, so uh, not far off, but it, also, it still performed pretty well, uh, better than uh, most of the ones we've tested other than the top-end Corsa and Samsung. Let's have a look at the write speed again using Atto to see if there's much of a difference. Uh, again, manufacturer says you will get 780 we actually got 823 megabytes per second, which again was better than what the manufacturer said, but a little bit slower than a couple uh, of the others what we have tested in the past. But again, still pretty good considering its price. Um, let's have a look at the temperatures. 
Right, as you can see this one, it actually comes in quite hot at 60 degrees Celsius. So to be honest with you, I'd try and make sure it's in direct airflow or at least got a heat sink on it. Uh, otherwise this could potentially get very hot very quickly. Um, but saying that, um, it does perform very well compared to a lot of the other ones we have tested. And the average temperature, as I said, was 60 degrees, but it did actually get up to 68 degrees Celsius at some point, which is uh, very, very hot. Overall, would I buy this? Yeah, I would actually. It is at a very good price point. Again, prices do fluctuate quite a bit. The price in the UK on this uh, is roughly looking at around about £43. Uh, in the States, uh, from what I can see, it looks around about the $38 to $40. So actually, that's pretty good performance considering the price. And for probably about another £20, you can jump up for the 512 gig version. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Don't forget to press the subscribe button over here. That way you'll get all the latest news and all the reviews we do on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.